The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. This is a story about a phenomenon of our times... About a world which Hamlet seemed to describe to the players, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold, as twere, the mirror up to nature. This is a story about a world as mad and ridiculous, as sad and as untidy as the one that most of us have to live in. A story of confusion of identities in which fancy becomes reality and vice versa. You must judge where truth begins and illusion ends. Our mystery drama, A Tale of Two Worlds, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Bob Caliban. I'll be back shortly with Act One. when you consider all the unreasoning things most of us are prey to. Fear of heights, of crowded places, superstitions, envy, and her darker sister, jealousy. Most of all, anger. For when rage suddenly explodes inside any of us, no matter how secure our worlds, if the fire burns strong enough, it can hurtle us out of the safe orbit of our own world and back to the savage jungle. For example... I just don't think I can believe my ears, Marsha. Oh, Brock, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What can I say? He's... he's, After all, he's my son. And what am I? You know what you are to me, Brock. Well, I thought I did. All I'm asking for is, is, is time before... Oh, Brock, is it too much to ask? Time is too precious to me. I'm not going to let this little twerp of a boy still wet behind the ears stand in my way, in our way. Please, Brock. You've got to understand Timmy's point of view. Why? Because he has some rights. A 20-year-old boy? Whose father has only been dead a little over a year. A father he would worship. A man who would have ended up in jail for going to the public truck once too often. And the last time without sufficient legal excuse. Well, you represented him. I was his lawyer because... Because I was in love with you and I... I didn't want you to be hurt. But he was convicted just the same. Because he was guilty. Well, Timmy doesn't think so. Oh, Timmy. Brock, please. Timmy, that wishy-washy, childish, diminutive of a name. It's the whole trouble. Why not Tim? Or even Timothy is his name. And I think of what that sniveling little toady is doing to bar us from the happiness we both have missed all our lives. I tell you, Marsha, son of yours or not, I could kill him with my bare hands. I... I could... Marsha, I tell you, I... Oh, I, I'm sorry. Timmy, I didn't expect you home so soon. You know I don't dig the country club scene, Mom. Uh, well, don't I even get a hello kiss? And what about Mr. Chalmers? Am I supposed to kiss him now, too? Oh. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, drop, Tim. Now, then, please. You can stay out of this, Mother. Don't talk to me that way. No, no, I'd advise you to listen, Marsha. Why? Because you're planning to make her a September bride? Why, you insufferable... No, Rob, please, please. Go ahead, Mom. Let him take a swing at me. I can handle him. Did I ask you to? I don't care if you did. Someone's got to, for Dad's sake. Doesn't anyone care about him anymore? Why should we? He ruined your mother's life as a common criminal, and the only decent thing he did was to take his life. Rob! I'll never believe that. Just as I know Dad never did one dishonest thing in his life... You know who really stole all that money? You! Me? Sure. The wheel within the wheel. The big high mucky muck. Dad was the only honest mayor this town ever had. And the rest of you crooks had to crucify him to cover yourself. I don't know what you're trying to say. I'm not trying. I said it. I don't know how my mother can even look at you. 
Because you killed my father. All right, that's as much as I'll take. The only way you'll ever stop me is to murder me, too. Henry. No, leave him alone. It's time we had this out. You killed my dad. Timmy! The last time you're going to try to hang that accusation on me, youngster, and get away with it. Oh, that's great. Just what I've been looking for. An excuse to knock your head off. Stop it, stop it, both of you. Stop it. Not on a bet. Time you learned a lesson. Maybe this will teach you. All right, come on, come on, get up. Rocky, keep away from him. Don't you see he's hurt? Oh, it'll take more than a couple of whacks to make up for all the pain he's caused me and us. Timmy? Timmy? You all right? Oh, no, he's not hurt. He's only shamming. Oh, please. I don't think so. The end, I, I think he hit his head. Oh, no. He must have oh. fallen on him. Oh, here, here. Wait a minute. Let me I, see. I don't want you to touch him. Well, don't be silly if the boy's hurt her. What is it, Brock? Is he bleeding badly? He... He's not bleeding anymore, Marcia. Then he's all right? No, I... I don't think so. What do you mean? I don't know what I... I... He's not breathing. Timmy... He is... He can't be. It... was an accident, Marcia. But I... Oh, God, forgive me. I think he's dead. Cut! Beautiful. That's it. It's a wrap. I'll be right out. <laughs> Marcia, sorry I blew that cue on you. Oh, couldn't matter less. I think today's showing beautifully. Yeah, yeah. It felt pretty good. Say, Timmy, you were great. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really had me going, huh? <laughs> Timmy? Timmy? Fun and games are over. Come on back to the really real. <laughs> Timmy. What's the matter, the kid, all right? Hey, friends, you really zinged it. Brock, my show, you're never better. You too, man. Hey. What's wrong with him? You all right? Yeah, sure. I'm great, Mr. Davis. Just great, man. Pardon me if I just lay here and make believe. <laughs> Suit yourself, Eddie. Me, I gotta make tracks. Got a commercial edition in half an hour. See you, folks. You on tomorrow? No, next call is Thursday. Huh. Henny, can I skip the pre rehearsal this afternoon? Oh, uh, well, uh. Oh, come on. Now, I only have one scene. Well, you know, I don't mind. It's just Sandy. He'll holler blue murder. Oh, he gives me a pain. He runs so scared all the time. I'm afraid he'll blow the job. <laughs> Uneasy lies ahead that wears the producer's hat, huh? <laughs> you, uh, know the ratings are off? <laughs> so? Uneasy lies all our heads. Oh, you should worry, Angel. Don't you know they always fire the writer first? Not this time around. I had to go and pick on... Watch it. What? The kid. Hey, Eddie, you okay? No. And don't call me Eddie. Why not? It's your name. My name is Timmy. I don't want to change it. Oh, what's in the name? Like the bard said, huh? You know how it is around this squirrel cage anyway. It's half the time I can't remember which are real names and which are the made-up ones. My name is Timmy around here. I'm not going to change it. What's my next call, Mr. Davis? You sound funny, dear. What do you mean, funny, Mother? Well, I'm... I mean, you didn't knock yourself out for real when you fell, did you? I guess that's what I'm trying to find out. What's my next call, Mr. Davis? Uh, I, uh, I guess next week's call sheets aren't posted yet. They're kind of late, aren't they? Well, you know, there's been a lot of rewriting going on. And all I mean is the scripts are late. And uh, Why are they rewriting? Well, you know how it is. The ratings down, the panic button's been hit, plot changes and what? all that. Plot changes, sir? Don't call me sir. You make me feel like I'm over the hill. Well, I'm afraid of... that I'm the one who's over the... Am I? Is that what it is? I... Uh, have you... Seen Sandy? 
Sure. I, I've seen Mr. Strzok. And didn't he say anything? Anything about what? You mean the kid doesn't... didn't know? Doesn't know what, Mother? Oh, don't call me that. You know my name. The only name I ever knew you as is Mother. Please, tell me. Tell me I'm not dead. I'm not really dead. Well, that's the way it is. How sure is it's a rough deal, but... What are you going to do? That show business. But I can't be dead. I won't be dead. My, my, my contract has eight weeks to run. Wow, that's the beauty part. See, you got a free ride. Take the money and run. I don't <laughs> want the money. I want my part back. I don't want to be dead. I don't want to be out of the show. Daddy, honey, honey, listen to me. No. No, I'm not going to listen to any of you. You listen to me. You can't kill me off like this. Don't you see? What? I've been on for all seasons since it began. Twelve, no, no, thirteen years ago. Don't you see? I I grew up as Timmy Bryce. I've never been anyone else. I was seven years old when it began. I, I'm not even twenty yet. I've always been Timmy. And you've always been my mother. You're how she's got to be. No, you have your own mother. You have your own life. Eddie, this is just another job, a, a make-believe existence. Oh, sure, we all get caught up in it, but, but once we walk out of the studio, we leave it there. I don't. I never have. Now, that's being childish. If I don't live here to come to, if I don't live here anymore, I don't have anywhere left to go. Honey... Nobody could blame you for being upset the crummy way this was done. But it's it's only a job. There'll be another one. I don't want another job. And it isn't a job. It was my life. If I can't be Timmy Bryce anymore, I might as well be dead. I don't want to live. I don't want to live anymore. You don't understand. You just, all of you, don't understand. You couldn't have had the decency, any of you, to let him down easy. You had to let him find out like this. Well, Sandy put the freeze on us. How? Why? Well, you know, the kid is a little kooky, and he was afraid if he knew, he... He what? You wouldn't give a performance? You would throw some kind of a monkey wrench into our plastic, predictable, phony little world? Then suddenly he might just do something plain real in the middle of all the planned hysteria. Well, maybe that's the way Sandy figured. It's his neck on the block oh. now. Oh, come on, Marsha. Let's sling a tourniquet on the bleeding heart bit. He got let down easy. In eight weeks, while he sits back getting paid... He'll latch on to another soap. Maybe. If he holds out long enough. What does that mean? I don't know. He's a... He's an oddball. And this hit him awfully hard. I, I just hope he... Hope he what? I'm almost afraid to say it. It's as if he... It's as if Timmy... Oh, it's funny. It is hard to think of him as anything but that. As, as if Timmy's real life were here in the studio and the other was just a dream, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe that's why none of us had the guts to face him with the truth. Marsha, what's wrong? I don't know. I'm, I'm scared. Scared? I don't understand. I'm scared of the way it came out. The way it hit him. Well, you don't think Timmy would do anything foolish, do you? Like what? Well, we all, one way or another, made him dead in this world. You don't think he'd go ahead in the, in the, in the outside one and make it for real? <laughs> 
actors are highly emotional people. They'd have to be to simulate all the characters they are asked to represent. But how real can any particular character become? How closely can the actor identify himself with that character? Could an actor die or want to die once that character ceased to be? I shall return shortly with Act Two. A week has passed in both the worlds we are following in this story. In the real world of our actors, it has been relatively uneventful. In the realm of the soap opera, for all seasons, it has been about the same. Time moves in slow motion in that world. And Timmy Bryce has yet to be declared medically dead. The audience must believe, for dramatic suspense, that some thread of life still remains. As ardently, Eddie Smith fights to keep his alter ego alive. Don't you see, Mr. Strzok? It isn't too late. Look, kid, do me a favor, will you? Quit bugging me. Come on, it's a week already. The decision is made and you're dead. Please, give me a chance. I don't have to die. Don't you hear me? You're dead, finished. And the script we're taping tomorrow. And the funeral is next Monday. See? It isn't too late. Mr. Strzok, I've been talking to everybody, and they all think it's a mistake to kill off someone who's been with this show from the beginning. Come on, come on. what's the sense going over and over it? The axe fell. I know it doesn't mean anything to you. This isn't even your show. What do you mean it isn't my show? You've been producer less than a year. Some of us have been here over 12. Why don't you just grow up and accept the fact you don't live here anymore? It's the only place I ever have lived. Come baby. off it. You know better than that. It's just another job. Nobody's indispensable. And listen, kid. And listen good. To hike that rating, I'd cut my mother's throat. What do you mean? Nobody's indispensable. What I said. Even the old lady herself. The old lady? Betty Lang. You mean my mother? Marsha Bryce? All right, if you want to stick to stage names. She's just another actress to me and an aging one at that. You take that back. What? What you said about my mother. Oh, oh, let go of me, kid. What are you trying to do? Kill me. I don't know. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, look, you better... You better go find yourself a good shrink. Uh, While the money's still coming in, you better try to get your head screwed on tight. I don't mean to bother you. I, I, I don't mean to bother anyone. Well, you do bother me. And I want you out of my hair. I don't want you around here anymore. I, I can't come to the studio anymore? From now on, I'm giving orders. This is a closed set. You can't keep me away from here? How can I? You try showing up here again, I'll have you thrown out in your ear. You better not try it. Why? You try to keep me away from where I belong and... And what? How... How dare you? What? Well, you... You crazy little nut. I, I think you mean that. Hello, Timmy. Dandy. Uh, What's the trouble? Oh, just this oddball coming around making waves. I want you and all the rest of the cast to know this set is close to him for good. Right now, I'm going for security to get him off it. Now, simmer down, Sandy. Let me handle Timmy. You've got other problems. Yeah? What? Well, how to keep this show on the air, for one. Come on, Eddie. Oh, Timmy, let's go back to my dressing room, hmm? I know I'm acting like a first-class lunkhead, but... I, I can't help myself. Of course you can. The thing to do for you is to get another job. I don't want another job. It won't be that easy anyway. Oh, why not? You're a good actor, Eddie Smith. Nobody thinks of me as him anymore. Not even me. I'm Timmy Bryce. And that's all I want to be. I, I just want to be Timmy. And you to be my mother. <laughs> even if I marry Brock Steven? If I was around, I'd never let you make that mistake. Well, now, that would be up to the writer, wouldn't it? The writer? 
Well, he is the one who dreams up the plots, isn't he? Yeah. No. I mean, sort of. But only out of the, the characters. I mean, us. What we're like and all. He just can't have us do anything. I, I mean, anything he feels like or, or the producer. You know that. Do I? Well, sure you do. The people, the audience, they won't let him. There are things we can do and things we can't. Otherwise, we're not real. We're not real anyway. Oh, yes, we are. To millions and millions of people every day. And, and to ourselves. Some of us. Like, y you take me. This is more real to me. You're more real to me than anything else in my life. Timmy. You see, you even think of me as Timmy. The way I think of you as the only mother I've got. Oh, now, come on. This is sick. Phony romantic, Daddy. So you throw me out, too, huh? I'm not throwing you out. You've got one mother. That's enough. Her? She walked out on Dad and me for another man. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. I, I'd forgotten what happened. But... But surely that wasn't a rejection of you. Any rejection is on my side. The character she married doesn't want any part of me. Or me of him. It doesn't matter. That other world, outside. I don't have anyone anymore. I don't belong there. What about your father? Didn't you know? He's dead. No. No, I didn't know that. I... What? We were lucky to keep it out of the papers. One advantage, I guess, is having a name like Smith. You can sink without leaving a ripple. He... He died? He figured he hadn't anything left to live for when he lost her. Sort of like me. He... He killed himself. Just like I'm gonna do. Oh, no. Now, now d don't talk like that. <laughs> you wouldn't do anything like that? Oh, wouldn't I? Why not? I'm dead already, thanks to Mr. Sandy Struck. If it wasn't for him, I... You know something, Mother? He's the one who ought to be dead. Timmy! Eddie, I... I What's I, the trouble, baby? Uh, it's just that crazy kid, Timmy. Henley, see if you can stop him. Oh, never mind. He's gone. Eddie Smith again? Yep. Something's going to have to be done about him. I really think Sandy's right. He's flipped his lid. Well, if he has, Sandy's to blame. And the rest of you, too. Oh, come on in. Close the door. I want to talk to you. Will do. I, uh, got a few bones to chew over with you. The way it was done is what knocked Eddie off the rails. That was a mistake. He could have been forewarned. Sandy could have had the decency to tell him straight out the best way when the decision was first taken. Maybe. No maybes about it. I still say maybe. Uh, no way this kid was ever going to accept getting bumped off this show. All right, then let's face it. That was the big mistake. Now you pegged it. It's uh, why I came by to see you. Here, have a look at these. What? The broadcast where Timmy met his death was aired day before yesterday. And this is the phone count and the early mail reaction. Oh, murder. Why didn't you let me know? I didn't think we had this many viewers. Yeah, we got them. And they're angry. And they don't want any part of this plot. All the letters and all the phone calls against it? <laughs> Why else were they writing or calling? Oh, I don't know why I ever went along with it. And he sold me a bill of goods that a murder trial was just what we needed to hike the ratings. Oh, that no-nothing. How we uh, ever got stuck with him? He knifed his way in. The only way he's ever been able to get a job. I'll never know how he undercut Dorian. She was the best producer we ever had. Till the share of the audience slumped. Well, Sandy's great plot line isn't going to save our necks. Not with this audience reaction. Oh, this is only the beginning. Wait till they have to stomach you being married to the guy who killed off your son. Isn't this our chance to get Timmy back? I mean, I mean it's not too late. We're not committed on the air yet. Well, 
he's still in a coma, but, but on, I... On, on any of the shows in the can, so far, he still isn't dead, hmm? No. Oh, come on. Emmett is at least three weeks ahead on scripts. What do you want him to do, throw all those out? Well, it's better than losing the show, going off the air. How would you like to do three weeks of acting and then be told you have to do it all over again without getting paid? Oh, come on, Henley. For all seasons, is in the big leagues. Now, money could be found to pay for mistakes. This happened before. And you do think it's all a mistake, don't you? Sure. Well, but I have to admit, at the same time, I'm old and battle-scarred. I'd rather roll with the punches and take a chance of ducking into one. You won't back me up? I try to go upstairs over Sandy's head? The older I get, the less adventurous I get. This whole problem of Eddie Smith and whether Timmy Bryce, my son on the show, is going to be alive or dead has, has got to be solved the right way. Or we're going to have a hell of a lot more of a disaster than just another soap opera disappearing from the tube. Marsha, I've never seen you so geared up. What are you talking about? That boy who just charged out of here, he... Well, he's an explosion looking for a location, an accident to happen. I honestly think that, that if we don't get him back on this show, not only is the show going to be dead, but Eddie Smith is, or, or else Sandy struck. Sandy? That boy is desperate enough to kill. Neither himself or the man he thinks drove him to the edge. Now, look, Betty. No, don't you... now, listen, you look, Henley. You've been our director for quite a few years, but I've been with Eddie Smith playing my son Timmy for 13 years, and I know him as well as, or perhaps better than my own real life sons. And I'm frightened because he, he's, he, he's, well, he's out of contact. There's no telling what that boy might do. Where is he? Where is that stupid little jerk? Now, Sandy, take it easy. Easy? You, you know, he just tried to kill me? Who? Eddie Smith. Who else? Oh, um, no. Close the door, Henry. Yeah, sure thing. How, Sandy? How? How did he try to kill you? Oh, I, I was... I was standing near the number two camera. Lucky he, he had to crab sideways suddenly to, to get a one-over-one one shot, and I followed with him. Because a split second later... One of the big scoops hit the floor right where I'd been standing. You mean a floodlight broke loose? How? There's only one way, Henny. Somebody had to unbolt it off the pipe and kick it loose. And you think it was Eddie? I know it was. You saw him? Oh, it could have been an accident. How can you be so sure it was Eddie? I'm sure, all right. Come on, come on. Are you hiding him in here? No, no. He left here 10 or 15 minutes ago. Give the kid a break, Sandy. At least until you have some proof. I got all the proof I need. What? When I booted him off the set for good, he told me he was going to kill me. Okay. One chance is enough. I'm turning this over to the police. Because I sure ain't about to give him another chance. Was it accident or design? Could you believe that Eddie Smith, alias Timmy Bryce is actually unbalanced enough to carry out his threat against the producer who ended one of his lives, the make-believe life that seems more important than his actual one? Well, we shall find out, along with some other chilling surprises, the real truth when I return shortly with Act Three. return once again to our tale of two worlds and the special breed of people who live in both of them. A group of people who are about to have a further shock as one of them, cast out from the imaginary world, suddenly appears from still another world to haunt the consciences of Marcia, the leading lady, Henley, the director, and particularly Sandy Struck, the producer. A fantasy homicide has been committed. Is a real-life one about to take place? Certainly Sandy Struck intends to make sure that he isn't the victim of one. Well, you can see for yourself, Detective Mathers, where the light hit the floor. Well, well that doesn't prove that this kid, uh, that, uh, Eddie Smith, was responsible for the light falling, Mr. Struck. Yeah, but I already told you, and a couple of the stagehands have confirmed it, that he threatened to kill me. That's another matter. 
What do you mean? If you want to come down to the precinct to us and make a formal charge against the boy for that, we can arrest him. And lock him up? No. It's a misdemeanor. The worst you could get is a fine. Well, more likely a warning from the judge. Wait a minute. You mean I'm not going to get any police protection? Uh, look, mister, we do the best we can. The uh, kid got excited and made a threat. If all the threats people made got took serious, we'd need more cops in the Russian army. Uh, why not give us a break and write it off? No, sir. I want my rights. Okay. Anytime it suits you, come down to the precinct house, like I said, and swear out the complaint. I want to go right now, I'll give you a ride. No, no, I can't. Good Lord, man, I got a show to get on the air. Oh, yeah. That's show business, huh? <laughs> All right, so it wasn't funny. I'm on today, 8 to 4. Tomorrow... Never mind tomorrow. Okay, today. I'll be there by 3. Like I say, you want to make a charge, I'll follow through. Don't worry. For once, maybe I'll get something for the taxes I pay. You're not going to go through with this, Sandy. You're damn right. Look, Marsh, it's my neck. I'm going to make sure nobody cuts it off. Well, if you hadn't been in such a hurry to drop the axe on Timmy, you wouldn't have to worry. See, even you think he's out to get me. I didn't say that. You didn't have to. It's still what you think. Come on, let's get this turkey on tape. You don't ask much, Marsha. I know what I'm asking, Emmett. It's a terrible thing to do to a writer. Twenty-five to thirty scripts down the drain? Oh, damn it, Marsha. Timmy is dead to all intents and purposes. He's a vegetable that only modern science is keeping alive. How do I revive him? You'll think of a way. Yeah, right at the moment, I can't think of one to save my soul. Well, if you don't, Emmett, there'll be no way to save the show. Now, the fans have been screaming by, by phone and by letter, some even in person. And the new ratings back them up. If Timmy dies, so does for all seasons. You don't know that. Oh, yes, I do. You think we can really turn it around? Well, it's been done before. It would be nice to save our necks. Yeah, and I'm not thinking only of us or the show, Emmett. I'm thinking of Timmy. I mean, Eddie. He got such a raw deal, it, it, it tore my heart out the way it hit him. He doesn't have much life, I guess, outside the studio. How come? He's a nice youngster. And he's also a child actor. Unless he's got a mother and father to root him solidly into real life. A, a child like that's in real trouble. Child? He's 20. Yeah, young 20. Trying to hold on to the past, just as hard as his future, through the show. Emmett, can we swing it? Well, you have to give me a couple of days to think about it. Please don't wait too long. It's a matter of... Oh, spare me that old clinker. Life and death. <laughs> well, in this case, more ways than one. Is that for me, Sandy? Why, yeah, Henry, you sure did. Do you what are you trying to pull me? off? Uh, pull off? Man. You heard me. Even homicide uh, against me. I'm just sitting here monitoring today's show, the one I had to miss. And, uh, wait a minute, hold on. My son died. Tabram, this is Sandy Struck. Roll back to the beginning of Act 3 and start again. What's the trouble? The trouble is I smell a large double O. First off, how come Timmy is still alive in the script when he's supposed to be dead? Now, Sandy, uh, we have a good thing going here, so we're just milking it. Sure, behind my back, because of that little nut. Well, no way. I know you're all out to knife me. I mean, for real. You'd probably like to see that psychopathic little crybaby get back at me. Well, you overreach yourself, because I got the real proof there's a plot against me, and it's right here on tape. <laughs> You must have been cracked to think you'd get away with it. Get away with what? I don't have to tell you. I'll show you. Okay, tape center. Roll that tape for all seasons again. I can think of, Brock, is 
the position my son is in. Now watch this, Henley. And don't tell me a director like you couldn't spot it. Watch. Just watch. And all the machines that maintain it for him. What? There you are. Right there. When you cut to Marsha and Brock and camera three, the window behind, you see who's peering in? No, I don't see what you mean. There's nobody. What do you mean? I could be held for manslaughter. Wait a minute. Even homicide. He was there. I mean, Timmy was there looking in. He... One way or another. Oh. Wait. Well, wait a minute till the next cut. What does anything else matter? I still don't see anything. But he was there. He was looking in. He was white and begging and the tears running down his face. And he was he was asking him to come back and, and he... Hey, tape center. Rewind and roll that tape again. No, no, you, you, you can't broadcast it like that, Henley. Not with that boy on it. Why was he led onto the set? You realize he was looking for me. He, he was looking to kill me. Sandy, come on. There was no one there. Eddie Smith wasn't on that tape. But I saw him. My dear man, I don't know what you're smoking these days or what you're on, but there were only two actors in that scene, Marsha and Brian. I saw him, I tell you. I saw him. I, I ran it and I saw him looking in that window, accusing me and, and threatening me if I, if I didn't give him back his part. Sandy, you were hallucinating. There was no one there. I tell you, there was. There... Oh, wait a minute. Control room four. Mr. Strzok. Yes, who wants to talk to you? This is Detective Matthews, 37th Precinct. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, uh, this is Mr. Strzok. I just thought maybe you'd like to know the kid Smith, the one you swore out the complaint against. Yeah? We just come up against a cross-reference in the files from out of state. Seems he's a missing person. A missing? What does that mean? The day after you swore out the complaint, the Illinois State Police fished his motorbike out of Lake Sikorgan. Took this long to trace out whose it was through the bike serial number. The main point is, it looks as if your boy wanted to kill anyone. It must have been himself. What? You mean to say he, he couldn't have been back in our studios like... During the last day or so? That's right. Then he... He's dead? You mean what, what I saw was a ghost? Yeah, Mr. Strzok, uh, listen, I didn't say he was dead. Huh? What's that? I didn't say the kid was dead. He's been in a Sikorgan hospital unidentified since last Friday. I don't understand. Why didn't he just say who he was? Because he's just like my wife tells me you got him on that soap opera of yours. He's in a coma. Oh. Oh, what are his chances? What are Timmy's chances on the show? My wife keeps asking. What can I say? I don't know. You guys who make up them stories, you're the only ones who know. As for the real life kid, that's up to the docs. I don't know that either. <laughs> What are you doing here? Well, I could ask you the same question, Detective Matthews. Oh, excuse me. Uh, this is Mrs. Elizabeth Lang, who plays Marsha on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I recognize her from seeing her on TV. Well, I recognize you from seeing you at the studio. And uh, this is our director, Mr. Davis. Hi. But uh, what are you doing here? Is, is Timmy... A... I mean, it's Eddie. Did he... Did he... Now, nah, take it easy, Mrs. Lang. It's good news all around. Oh. The kid came out of a coma all of a sudden six hours ago. Doctors say it's a miracle. That it's a complete reversal, and he's out of danger. You said about six hours ago he came to? You... You wouldn't remember the exact time, would you? Ah, uh, yes, I do. The doctor called me, and I left immediately. What time? Twenty-five minutes past five this evening. And they'd given him up for dead up to then? That's what the doctors told me. Then it is a miracle. You better believe it. What are you two talking about? It was exactly 25 after 5 that Ted Goldman gave the word to Henley, me, and Emmett that he'd overrule you. That Timmy was back on the show. He wasn't going to die. I didn't try to commit suicide, Mother. Honest, I didn't. I mean, sure, I was 
kind of blowing my mind, and maybe I got careless when the car coming the other way came barreling around the curve, and I swerved to avoid him, went into a skid, and that was the last thing I know, till I woke up here. All right, Eddie. And you're going to be all right. Oh, I sure am. I'm going to be back where I belong, on the show, with all of you, in my own world. Only... Do me one favor, huh? Uh-huh, if I can. D don't call me Eddie. Call me... Timmy. Honey, on the show, it'll be Timmy. That's the world where Timmy belongs. And off camera, it's Eddie Smith, and don't you forget it. There's another world where he belongs that you are going to have to start living in from now on. some of your favorite people inhabit every day. Well, every weekday. Watch them long enough, and it's hard not to believe that they are real. If watching them makes them seem so, how about the people who play act them? No wonder it might be possible for any one of them to forget just where fantasy ends and reality begins. I'll be back shortly. Shakespeare who said it also, all the world's a stage, and each man in his time plays many parts. Eddie Smith's mistake was locking himself into only one, a mistake, by the way, which he no longer makes. As it happened, for all seasons did not weather the rating war and went off the air. You see Eddie now in other shows and commercials, but his main role is as a husband, and now a new father in the world of the really real at last. Our cast included Bob Caliban, Ian Martin, Augusta Dabney, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... 